Okay, hi. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the labor that makes AI seem to be like magic. Um, so one of the key points that I want to start with is that artificial intelligence, it's made by people. <laughs> it's made with people, with human inputs. We talk a lot about technology, productivity gains, and what machines can do, but these machines often have humans inside. So it behooves technology researchers and people who are the CEOs of artificial intelligence companies to say that you know, any day now artificial intelligence will be able to do what humans do, that robots will be able to do what humans do because they attract funding, they attract investments. They have an, a vested interest in hiding other kinds of work that makes that AI and robotics possible. But so first I want to show you a bit about how do, how do computers and robots learn to see, hear, and understand the categories that humans know through culture. The difference between, uh, the difference between something hard and something soft. The way that binders for school can become binders full of women in a second when Mitt Romney makes a talk and people quote it on Twitter. Or even when SEOs develop new techniques and Google has to decide what is a good web page or not. The, the workers that are constantly bridging the gap between artificial intelligence and changing human culture, that changing world that computers sense, are human computation workers. And they work for systems like Amazon Mechanical Turk. So in this screen, what we see is a, a worker who actually spends uh, her days doing data processing tasks that include things like showing a computer's camera image, the, where, the, where an armrest of a sofa is, what a pillow on a sofa is, what the floor is. This is chunking up the world so that that magical robot can do the feats that we attribute to programmers and engineers and technology companies. Amazon Mechanical Turk is one labor platform that's one of the most public places for programmers and AI uh, engineers to get this kind of data processing work done. Um, but there are others, like App in Butler Hill, Sama Source. Um, this system offers all the flexibility to programmers. Programmers can put work out there for workers to do. Um, they don't have to pay minimum wage. They don't have an obligation to respond when workers have problems with the tasks that are out there. And the workers are classified as independent contractors. Um, recent statistics say that they make about 465 an hour in the US, less in India. So what do we do when automation doesn't replace labor, but it displaces it into forms that powerful entities have a vested interest in hiding? So one of the points that I wanted to, le I, I wanted to share with the room here today, because obviously I can't describe the full complexities of the system, um, is that these are precisely the workers that race against the machine. <laughs> These mechanical Turk workers are doing the work that artificial intelligence cannot do. They're doing the work that artificial intelligence needs it to do to stay calibrated to the world. But should they lean in, take MOOCs, and be more creative? Well, it turns out that among the most active mechanical Turk workers, 58% already have a bachelor's degree or higher. So that statistic is tabulated by a mechanical Turk worker named Click Happier, who cross-tabulated an NYU professor's data. And I looked up a study by Janine Berg of the International Labor Organization, and her statistics from a survey she did actually match up pretty well to what this mechanical Turk worker did. So one, some, some of these people are highly skilled, highly educated, but because they have to sometimes care for family members, supplement income, um, they are, don't have the opportunity to participate in jobs that actually even offer a minimum wage, despite their skills. I also wanted to share with you some of the ways that workers do unpaid work to make human computation work beyond just the work they do to fuel AI. Um, these forums are highly these labor markets are highly unregulated. There's limited communication between employers and requesters. And so workers actually do a lot of management amongst themselves to make this putatively routine labor something that's producible, brought, um, that works for programmers. So one example is a worker-run forum called MTurk Crowd, where workers teach each other how to become good mechanical Turk workers, how to find tasks, how to fulfill them efficiently, what scripts to use. Um, another forum, Turker Nation, 
um, has whole sections where they instruct employers on how to get in touch with workers, how to organize work better. They essentially have a place for mechanical Turk workers who get paid less than a minimum wage to offer advice, consulting to the employers um, who use their human computation work. Um, exiting or opting out is not really an option for these workers. Um, but they don't have a voice in guiding the policies of these platforms either. And those, those policies in combination with rules that call the, uh, these workers independent contractors mean that effectively they face a race to the bottom in a labor pool that's as large as there are internet connections going into people's homes for people who can actually do this kind of AI work. So a question that Christ, uh, Christy Milland of Turk Our Nation, a mechanical Turk worker asks is, you know, what do you do when you have researchers who say that you should help them out with their project, they don't get enough funding, and so you should help them even though they're paying $1.50 an hour? Is there any way to get through to those people? So I'm bringing her voice as a worker into this room, which guides investments in research, the practice of research, the training in graduate students, and the making of the policies that make this labor pool so exploitable to see what we can do today. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.